because then people know and start joining. Yes. How does the lighting look? Hard to tell. That's good. People can hear. People can hear? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's good. Okay. I can start talking. Okay. Do you want to hold it? I don't have to do it. Yeah, I can take okay. it. Okay. But you're going to put Colton on. Yeah. So okay. I should say hello first. Yeah. Hello. I, wait, this is not facing me. Hi. Hold on. Can you guys hear me? Um, I'm here, so two years ago, hold on, this is, this is bad. Two years ago, um, we opened Alice tonight, which was really exciting. I mean, it was more than, oh, Elizabeth, this is, I'm messing it up. We really, um, it changed all our lives. You know, we told this story about a girl whose friend was in quarantine. Hi, Elizabeth, can you track all these comments? Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm going to go get Colton. So then he and I can start talking and um, we can talk about the show and everything. Do you want to add him in, Elizabeth? Are you doing it there? You're doing it here? I'm in New York where I've been for the past year since this lockdown began. So you'll tell us. So now it's happened. Colton will just click in. Yeah. Sure. Hi. Where is everyone? Well, all these people are joining. Hi. 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 This is my apartment in New York. Books joined. Oh, so people join. Or people are joining. Yeah. And will Colton know that you invited him? He doesn't. Oh, that's good. Okay. Um, hi. Have most of you guys seen, um, oh, Florida, wow, Minnesota, oh my God. Watching from Germany, how exciting. That's so cool. Have you guys seen, um, Alice? I guess some of you have. Or maybe you've heard the Australia, wow. Some of you maybe have heard the album or Walking Down Museum Mile. Hi from Tennessee, Netherlands, wow, Mexico. This is amazing. Wait, it says Colton was unable to join. Oh. Are you sure you did it the right way? I'm really positive. I texted him. Okay. It, it just came up. Here, Colton the wizard oh. joined, but he joined. So he joined as a viewer. Yeah, we don't want that. Are you sure you did it the right way? I think so. Okay, try again. Go live with Colton. Okay. Send. Okay. This, I don't know if Colton's joining. Not yet. There he is. Hey! Hey, Colton. I'm just seeing all these pe places around the world where these people are joining us from. No way. Kind of amazing. I swear to you. Argentina. What have we got? Yeah, we've got Germany. What, what did we see? Massachusetts. Uh, Netherlands. Real exotic. Massachusetts, Tennessee. Wow. <laughs> All the Florida, Tennessee, all these places. <laughs> and Colton's in Kentucky now. No, 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 I'm in New York. You're not, you're in New York. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I was just saying um, two years ago. Hi from Bolton Wallace. <laughs> Wait, remind me what, what story again? Two years ago today was opening night of Alice by Heart, Argentina. 
Two wow. years ago, Hi, Eric. And I, we opened the show. Wow, that's crazy. Elizabeth says the last year doesn't count, so it was just a year ago. Mm. <laughs> or the last or, year or it's, like, it's like four years, so it was like, like last year could count as like a decade, so it was like 11 years ago. That's what ago. I'm saying. So it was like when we were young, we did this show. <laughs> I just filled water all over the place. So clueless. Um, but Colton got, what can we ask you? Oh, what was, what was the questions that came in, Elizabeth? Okay, we're cleaning up water. Julie James! Hey, Colton. Hey, Steven. Hi. Hi. Colton and I met, actually, at his audition. That's when we met. He came in reading for the White Rabbit. We didn't meet at the, at the Spring Awakening stage door. Can you believe it? I know. It was, what a disappointment. But you were at Baldwin Wallace. No, no, I was during no. during during the um, revival. I was, oh, during the revival, yeah, I was. And I, That's no, what I mean. I, well, when was that? Twenty fifteen. Yeah. When, yeah. Twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen. Yeah, I was in school, but I came up and saw it. Yeah. Yeah, the original. You were in the back of your your mom's car, probably. <laughs> I was. I was also in. The, I was really actually more in the back of my best friend's a high school older sister's car. And mm -hmm. she would just put it on and cry. And we would be in the back like, what <laughs> is she doing? Um, <laughs> but then I would like secretly like go home and listen to it myself and be like, holy shit. <laughs> wow. It was, it, was, it was a good friend of mine. He was like, but he was a clarinet player. And there's, yeah. I, there, there's not too many clarinet lines, prominent clarinet lines. Probably none at all, actually. We didn't have a clarinetist. We, we did an Alice, though. That's, a, that's why I'm thinking that. Yeah. So Alice, got yeah. Who reads. Yeah. Right. But um, and we had the string quartet in the band. Oh, right. And right. For, for Spring Awakening. Right, because Simon Hale, the genius. Yeah. yeah. So Simon Hale, who arranged um, Spring Awakening, also arranged Alice very differently. Right. But he didn't come in, did he? No, no, because he's... A He's a course of poem, right? <laughs> I know. He came in for Tootsie. He was working on Tootsie, and he came. Well, of course, we didn't have the budget to fly him in. That was probably part of it. <laughs> but I ran into it because he came to see the show. Wow, I was, I, I was ecstatic just, about this. Stephen, show. I was just called a gay org. I need you to. I need the, the creator to cite this source. That's not true. You were called gay org. Yeah, right there. And let me just say, has anyone here heard Colton's Left Behind? Because I think they would not go with gay org for that. How was it acting with Molly? That's your question, Colton. How was it acting with Molly? That's the question just came in, yeah. Wonderful. Um, she's like like a sweetie. And we like, our, it, that was like the first, I had known her for a long time before that. Or like knew, we were like in the same kind of circles because of Ben. And, um, and I was really, I thought she was super cool. And then it was funny because the first time we acted was that like, that audition where I read. Mm -hmm. And she even told me later that she was like, because it was funny, I was probably more nervous because of that. Like, like it, it was like, it was like meeting an acquaintance and then doing the most like personal, intimate, like scene work with being like, hey, oh my God, how are you? What's that thing? <laughs> like, like, no, I knew nothing about her except like, like her name and, and that we were supposed to know each other. Um, but then we had to be like, will you fight? <laughs> and you were like, will you like, you like maybe like hold her hand and like sing like maybe an inch apart, um, and she was like so. I remember she was like I was so happy because we because we because I knew you, and I was like I was so nervous because I did I didn't know you. Um, I remember you said to me that I said to you on a note or something. Oh, when you're singing this song, by the way, you're dead. Oh yeah yeah yeah. No, was, yeah. I said, right. By the way, when you sing this, you're dead. Well, here here's the full <laughs> here's like the the long form folklore. For the for the kids, is that like when I first auditioned for Alice, um, Steve mm. adamantly was like that kid sucks. Um, <laughs> that was and, exactly what I said. No, but I'm paraphr I'm paraphrasing, but I'm getting the essence. <laughs> and um, and so what ended up happening was during that time that that was in the summer, and you were, and uh, can you hear me? What, yeah, power. Um, I can now. We're doing you were doing it at Vassar, so I was auditioning for that. And I, and I remember going in and I had the two songs, I had Afternoon and uh, Another Room in Your Head. 
and I had one, the opening like Wonderland scene. And I had nothing else, like no log line, no context, no like, here's the pitch kid. So I walked in and you guys were like, do you, do you just want to do it? Cause I like, I kind of knew everybody a bit. And they were like, and I was like, yeah. And they were like, do you have any questions? And I was like, well, actually, I guess I probably should ask. Like, and I said, I, I was like, so I, if I'm getting this right, I think in the one song, I'm like right about to die. And in the <laughs> second song, I think I'm dead. Is that on the money? And you guys were like, right. Okay. So actually here's the deal. It's 1940. <laughs> so you have tuberculosis. You are like, you're coughing. You're just coughing all over the place. Uh, you, you like you have terrible anxiety. You're manic. Uh, oh, you're British. Do that too. Um, I was like, got, mm -hmm. yeah, got it. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, so really, I, I still blame you that I didn't get it the first yeah, time. I said no thank you, yeah. Because I, listen, I, I'm a hack. So like, it, it takes me a minute. Just put, I was like, I remember being like, I was like, hello, governor. <laughs> welcome to welcome to Wonderland, mate. <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm fucking know <laughs> But let me say this, and maybe everyone here knows this, or maybe none of you know this. Molly did the first workshop when she was like 14 years old, 15 years old. So she had been, she was our one and only Alice, except when we worked on it in London. That's true. She wasn't part of that, which was which was a year or so. But she did all the workshops. She was always Alice. So Colton walked into this situation with this girl who owned the role. Listen to, she'd been cast. She'd been done doing it too. So all she the had the lead. She had the, she had the After deed. After win out the way, boys. And the two of them got together and it was just like, whoa, this is what we need. This is the chemistry. They had, it was so alive and so electric. We were so, oh, okay. It was, it was so electric <laughs> and phone fell over. You can see how I roll. I think, I think everyone can now know clearly how it goes. Um, yeah, we need something to put this up. I see. Maybe like a like a stand. How about that? that. I'm just holding mine. Water bottles and water Maybe I hold it. Yeah. Well, it's good. Anyway, they had they had this electricity, and you knew they were so invested in each other and what was going to become of each other, and you wanted them to be together, and that was the heart of our show. So. Wow, that's really nice. And he was good. And by the way, Colton, who was doing like okay. Granted, had no idea and bad British accent. Colton, well, my British friend James Bourne, who some of you may know, is my partner on like a few oh, things. Right. He thought Colton was British when he saw the show. He'd flown in from London to see it on his way to LA. That's the highest thought, praise one can get. He said, wait, wait, I thought you were British. Oh yeah, he was like, I remember, because like, like a minute or two, he just, he like looked at me kind of shell-shocked and I was like, oh, I was like, poor thing, he like, <laughs> I don't know if he's still like recovering because like he just kept, I kept being like hey man how are you doing and he just was like like just kind of blank in, in the face and he finally was like I'm so sorry mate like he, like, was, he was like I fucking thought it was I, I could have sworn you from from Essex I was like it was like it was just like Love Island in it You're like <laughs> I loved that that was the highest praise one can get it was good it was good I would you know Wait a minute, Elizabeth, what, did we have questions we were yeah. supposed to answer? Okay. Okay, tell us some of the questions. I know some new ones are coming in. I thought um, you knew each other. We do know each other, but we met at the audition. <laughs> <laughs> We've never well, met. We didn't grow up together. We never met. Yeah, we were it at Baldwin a, Wallace together. It was a Twitter exchange. He was like, hey, man, uh, yeah. could you do this thing for me? <laughs> it was a DM. Was it. it was, he slid into my DMs. No, tell the truth. I was Henry Higgins, and he was Freddie. <laughs> it was Freddie, and that was it. How do you it remember that shit? I thought that was like amazing the way he blew that song out of the water. Okay, so what are our questions? Okay. Some, some questions we have. So, Ashlyn Brooks says. Okay, well, just, um, just tell us what she says. What was it about the story of Alice in Wonderland that initially inspired you to create Alice by Heart? Ooh. Um, Well, I loved the book. I had loved the book since I was a kid and I thought it was subversive. And I thought it was all about that. It hadn't been looked at in the way as like a, what it really means to grow up and how difficult it is to grow up. And um, Jesse, whom, whom Colton and I are devoted to, my friend Jesse, um, urged me to kind of bring 
another story to the story of Alice in Wonderland. Because I had just written it. I'd written this kind of, a lot of it's still there. This chaotic musical with the Mad Hatter and the, mm. you know, the White Rabbit. And, but it was with Jesse that I began to develop and that we developed together the story of Alfred and Alice. And, that, and, and Jesse touched on me to reach into my own life, my illness, my repeated illnesses. And um, so it was really her pushing to create that faded love story between the two of them. So that's not really what you're asking, but that's a, that's a true answer. Who are, who are yeah. you in the, who are you in Alice in Wonderland? Like when you read it as a kid, who were you? Matt Hatter? I was probably the White Rabbit. You know, that's what, that's what Jesse says I am, that I am the White Rabbit. You've heard her say that? You're definitely, you're so definitely like, White I'm late, Rabbit. I'm late, I'm late. You're definitely the right White Rabbit in this, but like when you were like, when you, you didn't have appointments. When I was a boy? When you, yeah, you didn't have appointments and meetings to get to. <laughs> <laughs> Who were you? Um, you didn't have deadlines, writing deadlines. Yeah, maybe the March Hare or someone like that, you know, sleeping under the teapot. <laughs> I would go there. The little Nicole now only plays roles based on me. In so my far. Oeuvre. That's where you go. Um, is that is that true? Am I two, am I currently two for two? Yeah, and the new thing we're working on together, that would be two for two. That's um, an exclusive. <laughs> there you go. What, saying That's no a drop. Man. Okay. What do we have? Other questions? We have other questions. We have okay. Um, oh, we have lots of questions. We do. Okay, this one be for Colton. This it, one's it can for be. Colton. Okay. Um, do, do, do you? Oh. Uh, well, let me ask my assistant to read the next one. Hey, what was the main it, thing about Alice by Heart? Oh, go ahead. Colton. What was oh, the no, main I'm, just, thing I'm, just, about I'm just asking my assistant as well to read okay. the next one. <laughs> assistant. <laughs> Is she there? <laughs> yeah, she can't. She kind of she got knocked off the live. She can't, fi can't figure it out. Hold on. Uh, I hope we'll, I'm hoping she'll figure it out. Let's put this. What was the main thing that drew you to Alice by Heart? Uh, the money. That's what I thought. And now it comes out. I mean, I think I think everyone could tell um, that I my heart wasn't in it. Uh, no. <laughs> um, what I don't think what they don't know is that we got we all got paid like twenty dollars and we shared it twenty ways. We pulled we pulled tips essentially. Yeah, there you go. Um, and we slept to Tenth Avenue. Um, <laughs> what drew me to it? All right. Well, there's like there's like a, a a beautiful answer and a cynical answer. And the cynical is like. Well, they, they didn't like me the first time. And I was like, well, f wh what the fuck, man? And I, uh, and I really, at that point, it became like a personal <laughs> mission at that point. A, a real chip on my shoulder moment. Um, no, but th that's the thing. I remember like loving the song, especially Afternoon. That one really like, I had like, you know, maybe a verse and a chorus, but like, and just like a demo tape. And I was still just like, man, that's, yeah it just, it pulled on me. And like, and so when, when you gave me all of the like 10 second elevator pitch when I was in the room, uh, after I left the room, <laughs> I also had been in there for like half an hour. And as much as it wasn't like my best, because it was so like, oh, okay, okay. It felt like muscling. But at the same time, when I walked out, you don't usually spend half an hour in a room without some sort of investment. So mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, I got that. I really oh, walked out. I was like, I was like, you know what? That's not my best, but I'm really going to, I'm really invested in this story now and I'm going to grow it. Like I'm going to really grow into this. And then you guys were like uh, big no. And I was like, okay, <laughs> uh, I understand. And I remember just like it kind of haunting me a little bit of just this sort of like, cause when you described it to me, I, and, and, and I put it in context and read the, and I did the scene for you all. I knew that I, I could, that was exactly what I wanted to do. Like that's the, like grief is a big kind of theme in my life thus far, unfortunately. And like, those are the kind of haunted stories I like telling, or I, at least like in terms of things that I think not only I connect to, but pe some people kind of see some, there's something in my eyes about it, you know, that like, Th those are the stories, unfortunately, that I get kind of get, I just draw to. And so when you guys said no, I kind of was like, oh, really? Shit. Like it really, it really, um, it haunted me of being like, but I know, I know in my heart, I have something to say with this. 
And so when it came back, it was so like cosmic. And so like, like Jesse came to the show that I was in called girl from the North country downtown. And I remember seeing her and Molly in out because it's such a small little house that I saw them during my, my number, like, like four rows ahead of me. And because it was a no, I was so embarrassed that like the rest of the show, I just keep being like, Oh, you suck. You just suck so bad. And in my own head. And not only that, at intermission, I got the email for the appointment to come back in for you all. And I was like, this is too weird, man. Like, this is just, this is too much pressure now. So when Molly and, and, and Jesse waited after the show, I ran out. I actually did, like, you have to walk through the lobby. I saw them and I just skirted along the edges. I like ran away, even though they were like, hey, I'm gonna see you in two days from now. I was like, oh my God, kill me. And uh, yeah, it was just all too weird. I like, I really considered not coming back in again. <laughs> I really was, I was like pretty, pretty like set on it. I was like, I can't embarrass myself again in that way because I'm not with, I'm, I'm, it's not going to be it, you know? I know. And also I feel like you and I, we, we, um, we, I, I definitely had a, a, a little bit of a different take and I feel like in a lot of ways, uh, I had to, we didn't know each other and I had to earn your, your trust. And once I did, it, I think we were able to like, really find something just kind of like, I mean, I, I, I literally still talk about it to this day. Like that's still probably my favorite theater experience still to this day. Mm -hmm. That's the most Zen I've ever been is doing, putting that together. And if you guys saw that thing, it was fucking crazy. So to be Zen during all of it is a, like all, all everyone else, like Wes and all them were like, why are you so fucking calm? <laughs> we're lifting people like the throat pizza pie throwing <laughs> tossing them in the air and i was like i know it's all good because i just felt so like cosmically at peace with the whole thing i think the reality is you had a destiny with the show i hope you're right i think i think you had a destiny to do the role maybe i think so or love or you were out of options at that point you've been through well, every boy and that, that was, was it. it. You, were the, you were the last one left who identified as male who came in and could, could hit the notes. No. Honestly, my agent tells me Not that true. every time I go in, don't worry, they're down to the last. It's, it's just you <laughs> and one other guy in the yeah. entire city. They've narrowed everyone else out. If you so can just kind of squeak out a note or two, <laughs> you might get lucky. All right, what, what else do we... I know they're rolling in questions and we're ignoring them, but what... These what? are all the questions. Okay, just say um, one that looks good to you. How do you believe Alice by Heart as a musical in general will resonate with the post-COVID generation once theater and the arts reopen? Oh, wow. Well, I, I, yeah. I mean, I'm not here to sell the show. and I, I mean, Colton is, which is why I listen to it. But, but <laughs> I, also, I, I, I have to, put, I have to disclose this information. I'm also a producer on the show. Uh, so <laughs> I'm yeah, saying. I do have a financial it's, state. It's international rights to, the, to producing the show. But, but so a lot of you may be seeing it come your way. But... Um, I, I think, you know, the show, when we were doing this two years ago, we did we know people would be walking around? Our whole cast came on in masks. Everyone, we were watching, the first image True. was a girl watching, being distanced from her friend and him being put into quarantine. It was so timely. We had wow. to kind of be, they were so shut up alone to, get, to take everyone into Wonderland. So I think it, the show is because the timeliness, it was sort of like ahead of its time in a way in terms of its timeliness. Right. And we didn't even fully realize how timely it was. And I think um, in a post COVID world, I don't know, I hope it will really speak to people and really speak to how much, um, how much is in our hearts and how much we can trust what's in our hearts to transform the harshness of our lives. Um, you know, one thing that Jesse and I often talked about when we were working on the show was this Nietzsche quote that, um, you know, without art, we die of too much reality. Ooh. And I think people are hungering for the theater. People are hungering for art. And I hope that Alice by Heart can, you know, fill a void somewhere and touch people again. Um, all right. What I else? think I'm going to be too old by then. You probably will have aged out. I will. I think I already have. I'm happy you've moved into this international producing role. 
<laughs> I think it'll suit you better. We're phasing you to a different part of the company. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're saying. Um, what are your favorite songs from Alice by Heart? Oh. Hmm. I, you know, the one that really always, I, I was like so shocked by, I'm not good at, at reading lyrics on paper and hearing any semblance of what it's going to be. So when I, I think read, most people are that way. Yeah, I think I, it's very hard to contextualize lyrics with any sort of melody. So when I read the thing cold and I read chill and the regrets, I was like, what is this? Like a, what is this like a reggaeton like song? Like what's this going to be? Like I was so I had no clue how it was going to come out. And that's probably like the vibiest song in the whole thing. And I used, and I get to sit backstage all the time and just like hang. And so I, I would love hanging in the wings to that one. Mm. Has everybody heard, have people heard Colton's version of Some Things Fall Away, the Cheshire Cat song? It's on my Instagram page I posted it. He, he does that ballad that the Cheshire Cat has, and it's gorgeous. Kind I love that song, too. Yeah. yeah. That one's, that one's right, sexy and sad. Oh, do I have a favorite song? Yeah. Um, oh, I like the ballads, you know. That's that's my taste. It's why, like, Duncan and... Duncan and I, it's like our great weakness and our great strength. That's we both like sad songs. <laughs> so I'm drawn to stories that are going to allow that. But I love, um, you know, Afternoon and another... Oh, you know what? I, I'll say this since I can give an answer because I love all the songs. I would say Still. Oh, yeah, I, I love, really that love too. Still. I really love Still. And it was one of the last songs to come into the show. It was that workshop for which... <laughs> in the summer workshop where... The ill-fated Colton. Well, Colton hadn't met his destiny yet, but we were there right. working in Poughkeepsie at New York Stage and Film at Vassar. And um, Jesse approached me one day, and we were in the thick of it, and none of it, no one had slept, and tempers were flaring, and there was difficulty, and people were absent or present, you know. And um, Jesse came, she was just lit, as she can be, as you know. She was just mm. like so lit from within. And she said to me, you know, I had a dream last night. Oh, and she said that af before, when, after we had talked, she and I, to be, in fairness, she and I had talked for some time about giving a white rabbit a song about time before he ran away from Alice on their, after their first meeting at Wonderland. And for one reason or after another, it just didn't work. And I didn't want to do, try to compete with Disney and like, what was that? And then she said, um, I had a dream last night that Alice and Alfred have a song that was like their childhood song. And that was the beginning of it. And then it was July 4th. It was July 4th, we, it was July 3rd, and everyone went home and it was so hot. So, so I mean, th this hot all makes hot. so much, this makes so much sense because it's such really? a patriotic song. Yeah, and I, um, I stayed <laughs> at Vassar when everyone left. So I was alone on this heat struck campus. And I wrote this lyric out on the campus and I texted it. Oh, I emailed it to Jesse and she called me and she had some thoughts and then I redid it. And then that, I think that, you no, know, yeah, maybe that, no, it was the day we came back to rehearsal on the fifth. I gave it to Duncan and we, we just worked on it together. And I sat and it, this is rare. I was in the room when he worked on the music, which is very rare. But so I actually had a bit more input into the music than I normally, we normally are just so in our own zones, but I like commented more That's just I so do. interesting that you you don't have to like talk about and you can make music in COVID really. A hundred percent, we have. You don't have to be in the same room. It's unreal. We have been. We have this one new musical which needed. Um, it, it had lyrics for which there was no music yet that had been that for a while, and Duncan said a bunch of them, and then um, I know shocking news. <laughs> and then we've gone back and forth. So that's another new musical forthcoming from Duncan and me. And tonight we're announcing it's playing the Bernard B. Jacobs Theater in 2022. <laughs> that's it. We're, we're putting up the marquee. And that's why we've invited you to this live tonight. It's the only Broadway show that will <laughs> exist. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I, was, I, was, I, was making, I was making fun saying, yes, yeah, no, still, that makes sense. Because it's like, it's like God bless America. And like, still, I just hear like the same sort of like, oh, very patriotic oh. themes. Oh, Oh. It, it screams 4th of July, burgers on the lawn, fireworks. I, th 
I thought it was interesting if you're having this song about time, 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 I have enough time, but it's like, it was different for me, like t still, time is calling me still, time is chasing me still, time is, you know, still is, is like things linger from the past. It's like the hold the past has on us. Mm -hmm. Also still is both a passive and an active word. Very much. You're either still in motion, you're, you are not, you are not moving or you are doing something still. Yes. Continuing to do something. Continuing to do something. It's, an, it's inertia. <laughs> there you go. No, literally. Uh, That's pretty, yeah. We're getting all these long comments. Are you just yes. following them? Are you hands? getting any? Like, I, I don't see any at all. You don't uh, see them? I think he's like swipe up from the bottom or swipe left or right. Oh, you don't see them? There's like, like tons of comments coming in. Yeah. What other? Give, give us um, an interesting there's one. There's so many good ones. What was your favorite little detail about the costumes? I let Colton do that. Okay. I'm not, not only yours. Okay, costumes, that's fair. That's plural. fair. I mean, I didn't, I didn't examine everybody's, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get, I got, I only saw all of Wes's, all of Noah's, and all of Andrew Coburn's. Oh, there, you saw those on a regular basis. I saw all of everything of them. <laughs> um, no, but I, the, I don't know if you all noticed this, but, because um, it's probably hard, but um, when the, on my costume, um, this crazy detail, um, mm. we had this vest and it had to quick, quick snap on uh, because in the Wonderland sequence, it had to be like, I was in like a, like a, uh, you know, a, like a hospital gown. And then they had to, the, everyone had to pull it off me. Um, had to be like semi naked for a moment and then had to be all of a sudden whipped into this, like, you know, like button down shirt, button up vest. And of course, none of those things could be buttoned. So it had to be, that was like 10 days of tech trying to figure out how to do that quickly mm. in like a like a three count that was and intense wasn't it? it it was very intense and it really didn't i mean didn't get like sold until like you know it's one of those theater magic things like kind of fixed itself right at the end <laughs> well didn't it, i'm sorry i'm minimizing it did not fix itself we had a, a crazy amazing dedicated costume team um so, yeah and so they we had this magnet system um where it would you know it would snap into place without much like you know fiddling and to cover the magnets, this is part of the design, it was unbelievable. The, the like buttoning, the buttons on the actual vest where buttons would be instead were actual watch faces. And the thing kind of coming across to That's fasten so it gorgeous. were, were uh, the leather watch straps. There was three of them and it was like, and they were heavy and so like, it, it was so beautiful and so like, and that's just like such a small meticulous detail. But like Paloma, oh my God! Yeah, Paloma, just oh my God, just genius, killed, killed. Yeah. It. The costumes were amazing. I'm trying to think who else I like. They were hard. Remember how many costumes Molly had to go through that could fit? She had to like wear a costume over a costume. Oh you know, right. At the beginning, so she could pull it off. And right, right, right. Starting right. glass, being no, we're going to try a different dress. No, we're going to mm -hmm. try this. Paloma was right in there with us the whole way. She's amazing. Oh well, I also love the, the Queen of Hearts. Oh my God. The, yeah, the blood a... handprints that make the make the yeah. hearts, yeah, just unbelievable detail. Like yeah, whew. yeah. How great was Andrew Cober in the show? My God, terrible. You, you know we Ab found absolutely Andrew Cober. Terrible. Actually, I saw him in Twelfth Night in the Park. Yeah, and called I did too. the same way she called me about you. <laughs> but I mean, really, we've seen you. But she's oh, she was very excited, which you know. I remember she, yeah, she told me after the show. But yeah, Cobra, he was so, he was amazing in that 12th. That 12th yeah, night was like me. unbelievable. Wasn't it great? And I just thought, oh my oh, God. He's so deft and so funny with Shakespeare. And he sings so great. And he's so, I just thought he's so great for our show. And we had imagined someone older in that role. And then we brought him in and he just slayed us. He Wasn't was it so like great. at one point, it was like, what's his name? Uh, like David Patrick Kelly, or is that his name? Yes. It was in like famous, famous when you were like, Baldwin Wallace. legend actor. He was amazing, but like he totally, wasn't a singer though. But totally, well, yeah, you totally know, different. He did that song Grilla Grayleg in a workshop. It was the first time we ever heard Grilla Grayleg was with him. Wow. I mean, he goes back like he's like like icon status. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then we Cobra. Had, we had some amazing things. What? 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 What, what's, what else, Elizabeth? More questions? Yeah, feed us um, something. 
feed us. Can't wait to hear. Uh, I want to know. I don't um, want to ignore all these ones coming in, but you're seeing them, right? Oh, wait a minute. Here's one. Um, this is a great question. Listening to the album, I noticed that the songs are sung without British accents, but the lines in the show are with accents. And I wondered if that was a conscious choice and yes. why that was a choice that was made. Well, what, what if I, I what if I was like it wasn't? Oh my god, are you serious? We didn't think. Oh like god, that. we forgot the British accents <laughs> when we sang. Oh my yeah. god, <laughs> what oh. were we doing? Yeah, we ran out of time and budget, and we just thought, you know, <laughs> we we ran just out of them on the lines. We'll leave the songs alone. No, we didn't learn the we that. learned the lines so deeply in British, but we didn't. We you know <laughs> it was like ABBA. We like we had knew, we had done syllable by syllable, but we couldn't actually just translate in dialect. <laughs> Yeah, it was just too complicated at that point. No, it was definitely a conscious choice. <laughs> and you know, um, also, Brits sing, pop stars sing with American accents, generally, not yeah. always. But, but it had to do with the timeless world of Wonderland we went into, that they were characters and then they went into something that was more representative, because we did it in America. Um, it came into a kind of more, um, what do we say? An eternal present when they sang. Mm. They stepped into another part of their being and they accessed the world of the musical world, the world of the songs. That was the idea. Ditto. Okay. I, I didn't write it, so I don't know. I mean, we thought it would be British, but Colton could not get the accent. It was, it really, it. That's it's the, killing he's us. Being a, he's being very on. kind. Yeah, he, it was really hinging on my abilities. Um, <laughs> And it just trickled down. It just it, slowly but surely. Yeah. What can you do? You know, a secret conversation here with somebody. See, like, hey, Colton can't get this. Maybe we should, you know. He sings yeah, a couple I'm, of songs. It's going to be, yeah. As a lyricist, I didn't want to feel like, I wanted to draw on that Lewis Carroll incredible stuff. Certainly we do it in really great, we're really full on Jabberwocky. But I also wanted to be free to create our own sort of postmodern poetry to set against that. Chris, mm. sort of 1940s diction, which Colson struggled so hard to get. To this, to this day. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> there's some questions for Colton about Little Boy Season 2 and Uncle Frank and stuff like that, if he wants to talk about those. Well, do one what? of them. Do one of them. About Little Boys. Little Boy Season 2 you can't or ask Uncle that. Frank. I can't, I can't talk about that. No. Yeah, no. That's no can't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> Um, how long was Alice in development? Alice was in development for eight years. Wow. We're waiting for Colton to grow up. And then, and now they're waiting for me to grow out. Now we're saying. It's now they just, saw it and they were like, we've made a huge mistake. <laughs> we're saying yeah. he's going to oversee productions around the world. <laughs> That'll be his new role. When we come back. Yeah, I'll be like the, like the By York Lee of Alice by Heart. Like I hold the Bible, I go around the world, I talk with the cast. I'm like spiritually Listen, getting them in the right headspace. It's which I would love the Carol Channing. You could go the Carol Channing route and just continue to play the white rabbit. Please, you know, please let me do anything to be Carol sure. Channing. I got my Invisalign, and it looks like it looks kind of like Carol Channing. <laughs> Will you fire? <laughs> that could be good. Oh, well, those are two different questions. So, you know, let me say this. We get so many requests about um, for productions of, of, of Alice and around the world. Right now, um, which is surprising to me how many countries can even perform right now can't at all. We can't even get into a room for ours. Um, but, um, you know, we want to do further work on the show. We want to work on it again. We felt like we got our shot at MCC, but we want to, there's some things we want to do. And so we've been reluctant to license it elsewhere. It absolutely will become available and be licensed. You know, before we, when it, it was developing at the National Theater in London, there was a, a version of the show that was, it was a one-act version of the show, which it ultimately became, but it was shorter. Um, and it was licensed a number of times and performed around the UK. And then we had to pull it back when we wanted to really go back to work on it. 
And so we're kind of, because theater's closed now anyway, we want to kind of get it right and do it again ourselves first. So um, will there be a junior version? I'm sure there will, but let me say this. I don't know if you've ever seen the junior version of Spring Awakening. It's sort of just Spring Awakening. We, we, um, we made some cuts and changes, but it's like Hanshin and his masturbating scene turns up stage instead of down stage. You know, we, we cut words, I change scenes, but um, there isn't that much in Alice. I don't know what you mean by junior version exactly, but I don't know that there's that much that would have to shift you know, to be done in high schools, to be done in, but, um, but I, it's certainly something we'll look at. The origin of this show in some way was my reading this article about these shows that were, had been, were being done in high school after high school after high school and thinking, we've done this show, we've created the show that's being done in college, wouldn't it be great to do something for young people and let them own it, so. Um. Let's see. It's almost six forty-five. Okay. But, um, so we only have time for a couple more questions. Yeah, a few more. There are a few more. Some... What piece of advice would you give to someone who wants to pursue a career in musical theater? That's a good one for Colton, except he seems to be freezing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Is it a a prior version? I'm a for a junior version. Oh, that was the question you already asked. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Colton, are you there? Are you coming back? No. Mm. But I wonder if people can still see me or if I'm slowed down. You're still going for me. Okay. So I'll answer, where's Colton? I don't know, he's there. He just seems to be frozen. So maybe he'll hang up and come back or maybe he'll come back in to focus. We were doing a Zoom workshop um, just a few weeks ago of this new piece that I've been working on with Colton. And um, he froze a bunch and then he would come back. What does this say? Who can see you? I can see you. Okay, so we need to invite Colton again. He dropped off. He seems to be moving. He sort of looks like he's going to move. But my, my screen, he's dropped off. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh. What does this say? Here are specific thought plans to work on Alice, like a specific scene or lyric. Oh. Colton. We're trying to get Colton back. Send request. Okay. Mm. I can't talk about that yet. But, um, but I'm proud of the lyrics. I'm happy with the lyrics. Um, he's gone for now. I think I'm back. Hi. Hi. Thank you. We had Colton too, and he's probably going to come back in a minute, but he's, he's faded out for the moment. Um, are there any last important questions we want to There's a question address? about the future of the show, if there's uh -huh. going to be on Broadway or what the plans are. I really hope so, from your lips. I hope that's going to get there. What, between writing original material versus adapting material? Oh, they're very different. And, you know, I've um, adapted um, material for musicals. I've never... Yeah, well, that's not true. My musical, Murder at the Gates, is an entirely original story. Um, it's a kind of um, murder, teen, savage kind of teen murder mystery with this cute, really cool score I've written with James Warren, the British composer we were talking about earlier. But um, in the theater, in the musical theater, mostly I've, like Spring Awakening, like with Prometheus Bound, like with Alice, I've really adapted other works. And it, there's something great about that with the musical. There are very few successful original musicals. It's kind of great to have this body of work you can tear into and find the, the moments you can musicalize and find where the songs lurk and also create the journeys for the characters in a musical world. But very different to create, to write about a book. And, and by the way, very different than to adapt that musical as another book. As the, you know, of course, the Alice by Heart novel, which I worked on for a long time, which came out about a year ago. Um, are there other things? Is Colton yeah, not coming I mean, back? A lot of other questions, um, but I don't see, know. If see if there's something good. Oh, what's this say about staying safe? Hope you're doing well and staying safe. You know, I have been. I was, um, I normally spend about half my time in LA, and I had been in LA 
for, um, I don't know, like a month yeah. more. And um, my producer for this, I've work, been working on a TV musical series, potentially. And um, the um, she, I was at her house, and she put a mask and gloves on me. This is a year ago. And I thought she was crazy. I mean, I, in a great way. I love her. But I thought, whoa, what is this with gloves? And I've got to ride on the plane. What am I going to do? And she put it. And I came back to New York. And this huge meeting, I was supposed to fly back to LA. And um, I, um, I kind of never. I've left my apartment since. I've just been here forever. Elizabeth, could you get me the thing to charge this? Yeah. Um, so I am staying safe. I'm, I'm really isolated. My assistant Elizabeth is here, as you can see. She's wearing a mask and she's been vaccinated. I haven't been yet, but she is. Um, I love Dodgy and was interested to know more about him. Yeah, oh, Sage questions here. I love Dodgy too. Sage says, um, because the queer could be of it. The Duchess deliberate or an actress twice. What do you mean by queer coding of Dodgy? Do you mean, um, I mean, it was always, always, always written in the script that Dodgy would become the Duchess and that Dodgy would be the kind of character he was, which is the reason we cast the kind of actor we did. So I'm not sure beyond that what to, so um, that was the, the way the character was conceived, yes. But I, I'm not sure I know entirely what you mean. I'm a writer who focuses on adapting, so that was very insightful. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> they said, will you sing something? That's probably for Colton. Oh, yeah, it would be. What, what? <laughs> um, are we, did you invite Colton? Let's invite Colton one more time, and then we, we maybe we have to wrap up. Do you want to try him one more time? Oh, you did it from there? Let's see. I bet it's still I have all of your stuff. Yeah, he said his phone was low. Oh. oh. There he is. How is it that you are more technically sufficient than I am? I, I grew, you know, I, it's being young. That's what I have to say. And for me, it's just I mean, too, I'm too damn old. Yeah, you boomers. That's what I'm saying. Too, too old for this shit. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, which is why we're sending you on the road. Did you know, um, speaking of me aging out earlier, I don't know when I cut back in, but um, I didn't know this until like, a couple, like probably a year ago, but I'm actually a cusp Gen Z person. Oh, wow. I was born in 1995. But I, it makes a lot of sense because I have all these like weird, I'm like a personality crisis when it comes to whether or not I'm an, a millennial or a Gen Z person. So for all you kids out there, you know, I'm, I'm one cast. of you. I'm one of you. You know. There you go. Call me. Um, um, so I think we have to wrap up in just a couple of minutes. But um, wait, can I, I can I ask you a question? It's so great to have called it. Yeah, of course. Do you watch Wandavision? I haven't. Oh, you gotta. Really? Yeah, it's just un. I don't know if anyone here has watched the the, re the, t the episode today. I was just cr like I came in here. One I, I just been crying watching this thing. Oh wow. I don't know if you, I I think. Do you like superhero stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Too sophisticated. Well. You know, I, in the pandemic, I've been alone. I've been here in my apartment, mm -hmm. right? And I found what that's done. I, I, you know, I always read a lot, but I've been, I've been reading and reading more. And I feel more, I feel lonelier if I watch something on. Oh. And I feel less lonely. If I, I don't feel lonely. I'm not saying I've, I haven't been. I feel fulfilled. I've been, it's been a really productive time for me. But when I'm in my book, I feel like really engaged and like engaged mm. in my project and yeah. furthering my work. When I'm sitting watching something, I'm kind of like, well, I could be watching with my son, only I'm not. So. Oh, that's so but, interesting. Yeah. That's kind of like, um, so I've rewatched the series Parks and Rec like 17 mm -hmm. times. <laughs> and every time I watch it, when it comes to a close, I cry. But I, oh. I, I grieve the idea that I won't be living I'm wondering if it's similar as when you're reading a novel. Because I've had that situation when I read books as well. 
but where I'm, which is kind of thematically about Alice too, but like where, yeah, you don't feel alone because you're so in their reality. You're so a part of it that like, you honestly feel like they're your neighbors or they're your, you know, depending on what you're watching or reading, like, but yeah. I, I wonder if that's a similar feeling. You go into that world. And also because I'm working on a novel, it, it like feeds it very directly. Mm. That's what I feel. Um, Feed and <laughs> theater's not around, so as you know, well, so I do Wait, well what? working on like Wait, what? Or my novel. Maybe you haven't heard. I just haven't been going to work. I just I thought I would be in trouble. Well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> We're going to talk about later. Are you the your company truancy. manager of Girls your in the truancy, yeah. <laughs> You haven't shown up in 365 days. What is going on? And here? it's it's time to collect a uh, payment on that. All right. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. What does it say? Wow, nice. Referred to oh, my childhood program called. I don't know. We're getting a lot of stuff. Parks and Rec. Oh my god. <laughs> I've set off. The, I've set off the, the stands. Yeah. So I have to get on a Zoom in a minute for this other unmentioned musical that, that Colton will be announcing later tonight. Um, but um, this was amazing. Colton the Cute, I see that. Please say your comment again. It was so good. Oh. Can Colton give advice for aspiring actors? There's so many questions coming in. Yeah, I can give you Do you have any advice. advice for someone? Here's here's more sophisticated. Advice for someone who wants to be in a production of Alice by Heart in the future. Well, I guess I probably, yeah, I mean, this will probably answer one and the same. But like, like okay, like take my my being a part of Alice by, for example. Like that that is the, the, that is the plight of being an actor all the time. Is if you are true if you're if you are being honest with yourself if you're looking at yourself in the mirror every day and you really ask and, and you really say like all right don't don't hold any punches be honest with yourself all the highs and the lows that come with that which is, is it's honestly a very noble and hard thing to do every day and that's what being an artist is if you do that i've personally found that you will feel fulfilled at least enough and when it came to like say this with alice right you might think you're the perfect person for Alfred, and that means you pro that means you are, and you're and, and your what you bring to it would be perfect. If it's not right with Stephen, or whoever's do or you know, that's nothing. That's no sweat off your back because that just means that you are not the trumpet that is going to to make these for these people. You're just not the right instrument at the time. But with me and Stephen, it was like that was one of the first times that I, I genuinely. Um, after being a, a young person trying to become an actor, it's one of the first times I actually kind of sort of stuck to my guns about um, what I wanted to say with my life, what, what, what I felt like inside and what I wanted to do or what I wanted to bring into this world. And, and I think that's by the second time I, I was actively, that, that was a, that was a mission that was coming through. And I think that was something that they were receiving to go, oh, okay, well now this kid knows who he is. Mm -hmm. um and that to me is like they could have said no and that time i would have been very okay with that mm -hmm. the first time i wasn't being myself i wasn't being true to myself or knowing at all what was down mm -hmm. here and what i wanted to say mm -hmm. um and so i was i was upset the first time because mm -hmm. you know i wasn't being honest with myself about well am i really putting am i really the am i really doing the right thing am i really putting the best thing out there Am I the best for them? Because that's just kind of the whole thing, you know? It's like, you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Um, but you can go to bed at night trying to be an actor, failing at being an actor, succeeding at being an actor by just, by just being honest. Which sounds really simple and dumb, but it's, it's, it really is the hardest. I think it's the hardest thing any human can do. And it's why a life in the arts is so fulfilling. Mm -hmm. It's so challenging. Yeah, because who else is that interest? Who has the time to be that introspective? Mm -hmm. But you'll 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 know it. You know, you'll know when the thing like when you're doing. If you're talking, if these are high school people, like when that if that role doesn't go your way, God, it feels like the end of the world at the time. 
But when the one comes, you'll know why. You'll be in the right place in your life, in the right space. You'll be able to provide everything that, that someone like Steven needs of you. And at the same time, you will also have your cup fill, running over. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm, no one's here. What I say doesn't make sense. <laughs> no one's going to answer. I'll just type out an answer. That right? Someone say something. God, <laughs> please, get, say something. Affirm me. Um, unfortunately, I have to go because I have this Zoom, but I love this. Maybe we'll convince Colton we'll all do it again sometime soon because this just send, is just send, the, send, send the link to the Zoom. We'll all just join on there. <laughs> okay. The, oh, that's good. That's good. Keep the good times rolling. That. She would love that. Yeah. I will just say I brought some guests where, you know, we have some actors who can help and we have some interested friends. Yeah. It, that'd can, be good. Be, it can be just a webinar. I mean, it could be like, we don't <laughs> have to say anything or like, we could just be there. Yeah. I'll just post the link. That's smart. I'll post it now. Good. Um, but anyway, thank you everyone for helping us celebrate this anniversary. It means a lot to both of us. I mean, the anniversary and it means a lot that you joined us. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. I just feel so old. I know me too. Never felt older in my life. Mm. Thank you for doing this, Colton. Thank you. So okay. Down and